other people are just not going to have the engineering capability to make something that performs that well. They can get, you know, maybe halfway there, three quarters of the way there. Their castings are not going to be nearly as high quality as Tesla's, at least for a long time. And, you know, by the time they can catch up to what Tesla's doing now, Tesla will continue to improve and make them even better. One of the Thanks. things that's cool about this is that it demonstrates you know, they understand the manufacturing processes and they, Tesla itself, you know, this is why they own Groman Engineering. This is why they have an in-house die shop that we'll talk about with the castings. It's not just about the machine. It's not even just about the machine that makes the machine. It's about the machine that makes the machine that makes the machine. So the die shops and their ability, the, you know, these Groman Engineering groups that actually perform the automation work and design their own tools. So, you know, you can't just go and buy one of these air bending press brakes from an external supplier. You have to design the process of how it's going to work. And then you have to make that specialized press brake yourself in order to be able to do this process. Um, and Tesla is able to do all of that. And because all those people work in the same company and because it's Tesla and they work in such a tightly integrated fashion, they're talking to each other all the time. And the person who's designing that machine, he can go down to the line and see exactly how it's working and what's wrong with it. Um, you know, this is also the exact same process that they have in place for developing the 4680 lines. And this is something that you just don't see from the legacy automotive manufacturers. They're just hunting that over Somewhere. to another company. They're saying, yeah, hey, Bosch, can you make this part? And Bosch is the one that has to figure out how to make that part. And they're going to be like, mm, no, none of the stuff that we have does what you want. Uh, you're just pwned. Then the MBAs at Ford and GM, they say, okay, that's fine, thanks. And they don't innovate. They don't make something that's new. They don't push the boundaries. I love it. They, thank you for explaining that the machine that makes the machine that makes the machine. Um, and, and so Tesla is working on even that part of it. Here's another uh, invention that they did. And what's shocking is they just shared it with the world. They just shared it with competitors. Let's listen to how steel metal flows like a river and why it makes Yeah, this will be aluminum okay, that they're using in these oh, castings. Aluminum. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Add, you know, feeds in bad directions. But when you look at the side, it, it, you know, the flow, we, we, the biscuit comes in through the middle right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And then we flow it all out and we do it like a river because like metal wants to, liquid right. metal wants to move like a river. A lot of times when you see these people copying us and maybe I'm giving it away stuff, but they, it's an engineer drew it, right? And they drew triangles yeah. and trusses, yeah. right? But here at Tesla, we have in-house die designers that sit right next to the guys that are designing the castings and they're going back and forth in simulations so that we can lower the tonnage of the presses we're using by integrating the design of the part into the design of the tool, which is why we don't need necessarily 8,000 ton press for the front. When we started, we thought we would. Uh -huh. We said, oh, we're gonna need 8,000 tons, but we worked through the team and we actually can make this front one on the same tool, uh, equipment as we make the Model Ys. That's, Not uh, the rear one. That's amazing. The rear one's too big. Yeah, well. It helps the cycle we're, time too, right? Yeah, yeah, it does help the cycle time because you get more even cooling across the whole thing. Well, that's the big thing, cooling and, and warpage, everybody, Everybody asks the same question. I mean, how much does this warp? And and I well, said, well, it happens so quickly, it shouldn't warp at all. But yeah, I mean, it's really about how long we cool it in the dye, and you let the yeah. skin cool, and then when you pull it out, we don't have straighteners or anything. So how many how many presses are are pushing these out now? We, uh, we have one for the front, two for the rear. But we, as I said, we have the Model Y ones. Yeah. So while the big news, of course, was that that shocked us, uh, was that they're using the same. Giga press for the Model Y as a, the front, anyways, with the uh, giga, uh, the Cybertruck. But actually, the bigger news was what he shared. Like just the marvel of engineering. There's, yeah, there's mean? so many things in that little segment that he just talked about. And um, as an engineer, it just is. This is a symphony. So one of the things that people don't understand is how many disciplines are involved in accomplishing a casting like that. And so, you know, he said they originally thought they were going to have to have that 9,000 ton press and they were going to operate it at 8,000 tons worth of clamping pressure in order to make the front one. They may need more for the back. But then through this process, they realize, wow, we can actually make this much more efficiently and it will prevent us from actually having to use that much force so we can actually use a whole smaller machine. Um, that's kind of the TLDR of the whole thing that most people 
will walk away with and be like, cool, that means we can ramp faster. Awesome. But as an engineer, so many of the things that he said there were fascinating because when you when an engineer designs something, one of the ways that makes it easier to understand how the force is going to flow through that structure, either statically or dynamically, is the more straight lines you have, the easier the math is to calculate how it's going to perform. Um, and when you get into these complicated structures, then you can start doing more complicated versions of where you're not designed, like you're never going to figure out how the force is going to flow through that by hand. You're going to have to use very complicated simulation software um, called FEA, which is finite element analysis to see how force is actually transferred through those different things to make sure that every part is strong enough. It has enough material to hold there. And then, the, there's so FEA is for a solid object, and then CFD is similar to FEA. That's computational fluid dynamics, and that is basically um, FEA for things that are liquid and things that uh, move. So and also gases, and so there is a feedback loop here that involves FEA analysis of how does this casting actually work in practice when we undergo loads of the suspension traveling you know like hitting bumps or getting impacted from the side and crash or from the front and crash all these different scenarios to make sure that this piece is going to perform all the different jobs that you need it to do but then they also have to figure out, okay how do we get the metal to flow into this die perfectly and so that's where the cfd comes in so you've got an expert in fea you've got experts in cfd who are figuring out, okay, how do we get it to not only perform the way we want it to perform, but make it the way that we want to make it? And all of those straight lines and hard angles that make it easier to design and compute how it's going to perform in FEA, they actually make mm. it harder for the metal to flow when you're doing your CFD analysis. And mm. they are creating, when he talked about temperature, if you have a sharp angle where you're having metal flow around there, that tip, is going to be a point where you have extra heat that's going to build up um, or that that's going to cool faster than when you come in and do your cooling. And places where you have either a lot higher or lower heat than average end up being places where you your part becomes weaker or are going to cause warping and for this thing to change shape after you pull it out of the die. And so they want it to cool as evenly as possible. And so making it flow in with the least amount of resistance, I mean, you can imagine, so if you had a PVC pipe that you're going to push water through and you did a square loop that, you know, there's a straight piece of pipe, a 90 degree bend, another straight pipe, a 90 degree bend, and it goes around in a spiral, it's going to be a lot harder to push water through that, through those 90 degree bends than it is if you just have a hose that's coiled up with nice, even diameter coils. Um, and so the same thing is operating when they're pushing this molten aluminum into this die. And so if they can get it to flow smoother and have less resistance from these corners and things, um, that's why they don't have to hold those two dies together as strongly anymore is because there's less resistance trying to push it apart. Um, and then it just so happens that when they do that, also heating and cooling comes out much more evenly, which allows these parts to come out very precisely each time. They don't have to worry about as it's cooling, having it shrink in weird ways that cause it to twist or to bend or do something funky like that. Um, and so, yeah, there's, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years worth of engineering experience that go into producing something that is that masterful. And it's across a whole range of disciplines and people that have to work together. You have to get each and every one of those elements right. And you have to integrate them with a whole bunch of other elements at the same time. And so it, it is absolutely beautiful. And we'll, when other people are copying these, you know, Lars said that they can, they can demonstrate the end result of this and they can say, hey, mm -hmm. these are the things that you need to do in order to accomplish what we have accomplished other people are just not going to have 
the engineering capability to make something that performs that well. They can get, you know, maybe halfway there, three quarters of the way there. Um, Chaopeng mm-hmm. is a company that is going hard into castings right now. Their castings are not going to be nearly as high quality as Tesla's, at least for a long time. And, you know, by the time they can catch up to what Tesla's doing now, Tesla will continue to improve and make them even better. Um, and so that's why Xiaoping has a 16,000 ton gigapress, whereas Tesla's only using 9,000 ton gigapresses, is because Xiaoping isn't able to design their castings as well as Tesla can. And so they have to have extra margin. They have to have this bigger machine in order to produce something that performs the same function, but not as well. And they're going to use more aluminum. Their parts are not going to be as high a quality because they are going to have some bending and warping. And, um, you know, if their metal is not as high quality going in, that's another factor. So all of these things, you know, Chaoping can make castings, but they're not going to be equivalent to Tesla Giga castings. Um, and the same is going to be true for you know anyone. And the other piece is going back to the vertical integration that the people that are doing all of that incredible simulation to make sure that these parts work perfectly when they design them and that the dimensional accuracy is there. Um, all those people work for Tesla. These other companies, they don't have people who can do that simulation in-house. They have to hire someone who's outside of the company which makes the whole design cycle to actually create those things much, much longer, more difficult. And then those people are not working with your tool and die makers. And so there's just like a whole number of things that make this harder and harder and harder for other people to copy. (laughs) Fantastic. Thank you so much, Hans. You know, the whole, you know, vertical, vertical integration and the fact that they're all right there, but uh, you just masterclass explanation of what's happening. 